Nityanandam everyone, welcome back to the Kundalini Yogini. This is Prasida. Thank you so much for joining me on today's video. So I am finally biting the bullet and making a video that has been one of my most requested videos of all time that I have never made until now. So I'm really excited. This is probably my favorite topic to talk about in, you know, in literally all of my passions. This is the ultimate, which is Hinduism, Sanatana Dharma, my spiritual path. And so, so many of you guys from all around the world have asked me where to start. How does somebody completely brand new and wanting to explore Hinduism or what we call Sanatana Dharma, where, where do they begin? Where do they start? And how can they start learning about this religious path or this spiritual path? See, the toughest part of this video by far and why I put it off for some time is that Sanatana Dharma is a very large umbrella that includes many very, very diverse and sometimes even contradictory spiritual paths within it. And so that's why Sanatana Dharma is a more accurate term for those of you guys that are new because it means the eternal path, but it's so much more beyond the label that we consider a religion. It is not one religion. It is so many different belief paths and philosophies. Some are theistic, meaning God-based, and some are actually non-theistic and more philosophy-based. Tantra, yoga, and bhakti are probably some of the most well-known paths that fall under Sanatana Dharma in the modern West today that are the most well-known. But there is such a wide range, like I said, of worship and traditions like Shaivism, those that worship Shiva, Vaishnavism, those that worship Vishnu as the Godhead, Shaktism, those that worship the Divine Mother, Goddess, as the ultimate. And there's pretty much a path for any god and goddess you can think of, including paths that don't have anything to do with a god or a goddess, like I mentioned, that are more philosophy-based, life sciences, and even sometimes logical reasoning sciences like Nyaya and Visheshika philosophies, and even Vedanta. So ultimately, you are going to have to explore and put in a lot of time and honest seeking into this path, and trust me, it is worthwhile. You will be divinely guided, and I don't just say that as a fluffy thing. I really, really mean it. You will see that the more intensity you have with your seeking of the truth, the divine, whatever you name you connect to, will guide you and you will be given the next book or led to the next video or you'll end up at some place where you meet somebody who tells you about this certain you know, path, something like this. And it's really, really such a beautiful, exciting, juicy process to go through. So I can't wait for you guys to embark on this journey. Really what I would advise ultimately absorb as much knowledge and experience as you can from as many diverse diverse paths as possible look and absorb from as many masters or enlightened beings as possible go down every different path and that way you'll actually know what speaks to you you'll be fully educated you'll have all the cards on the table to actually know what you connect with and which path that's calling you now one of the most common questions that I have been asked related to this topic is what are the main principles to follow? How can I start changing my lifestyle to go down the path of Hinduism or Sanatana Dharma? And even this question, I know you guys won't like the answer, but even this question is almost impossible to answer because like I said, every single sect or path within the umbrella of Sanatana Dharma is so diverse. But my guru has summarized and I found it to be true in my own research and experience. There's a few few special things that are kind of a part of every single path within Hinduism. And that is respect for Devi or Mother Nature, Mother Earth. Connection to really the raw elements, the forces of nature. And really immense respect and worship of those forces. Number two, respect for the cow, what we call Gomata. It's really, the cow is considered the most sacred divine animal within Hinduism in every different branch. And so re deep reverence for cows is a huge, huge part of the tradition. And that might sound a little funny to you, but the more that you learn about it, trust me, it is very, very beautiful philosophy. And the last one is the use of Om. So, you know, as a lot of people joke around about yogis chanting Om, 
But really this sacred syllable is the ultimate mantra that relates to every single path and there's a deep significance behind Om and its meaning within the creation of the cosmos. For more context about the actual beliefs within this path and the, the core kind of principles and philosophies, I have already made a video about that which is all about why I follow Hinduism. It's in my playlist titled Introduction to Sanatana Dharma. And I have a few different videos I would urge you guys to check out if you wanna learn more about that. But now I am going to enter into exactly how you can get started without further ado. Number one, I know I tell you guys this a lot, but read. You have to read directly on your own because only then the dots will start connecting for you. I would highly recommend starting with one of the most principal texts of Sanatana Hindu Dharma, which is the Bhagavad Gita. Then you could start with reading about testimonials and autobiographies from enlightened masters and swamis, such as Autobiography of a Yogi or the Gospel of Ramakrishna are two of my most favorites. And of course, Living Enlightenment, which is written by my guru Bhagavan Nityananda. Amazing summary of all the different philosophies within Sanatana Dharma and also my master's life experiences. And then ultimately, I would highly recommend you read the direct source text, what we call the Shastra Pramanas, or the foundational text of the entire path of Sanatana Dharma, directly in Sanskrit, and of course they have to be translated to understand, but read the Vedas and read the Agamas. You can find these translations, one of my most favorite websites is HimalayanAcademy.com and download them, they're free ebooks. You can read them directly for yourself and start diving into this knowledge. Next, knowledge is not anything without an experience in Hinduism. That's why I think it is, it is the most ultimate path for seekers because it's not just about reading a book. As much as I, as I urge you to do that, it doesn't mean anything until it becomes your experience. And so the next pointers I'm gonna give you are all about how you can get the direct experience of this beautiful spiritual path. Number two is gonna be going to a local temple. No matter where you live, I am sure you can make it happen and make it possible for yourself to get to a local Hindu temple. There is such a, again, diversity of different temples out there, but to get just a glimpse of the experience and the, to the temple culture and the communities around temples is so important and such a major part of this path. And so definitely check out as many temples as you possibly can in your area. Number three is going to be incorporating very prominent rituals, spiritual practices that give, again, direct experience to the practitioner, like puja, yoga, and meditation. I will link for you guys in the description, again, the yoga that I recommend and that I teach and follow, as well as the puja that I do every single day if you're interested in that, and meditations that I follow as well. Meditation especially, and yoga especially, is really an inseparable part of the Sanatana Dharma path. You will see no matter what path or sect somebody follows, that is a very large component of our spiritual practice and daily journey of self-evolution, self-growth. Because again, you're, you're tapping into yourself. And that is what the search for truth is all about. In Hinduism, we don't consider there, there to be a separation between seeking who we are and seeking God. It's one and the same. And so everything is about that inward journey. So that question, who am I, is always resounding within our spiritual practices. And yoga and meditation reveal those answers to us. We get them through direct union with the divine, with these mystical and magical experiences that get unlocked in us. Just an additional point I'll add on to meditation is the use of mantra or chanting is a huge component of all these different rituals of yoga, meditation, and puja. Sound, the power of sound, really originated within the Vedic culture, within Sanatana Dharma, before it popularized to what we see today, like with sound healing and sound baths. This has been a very key tool that has been used for thousands of years, and rightly so, it's extremely powerful. And so you'll find that even as a, new, a newcomer to these practices, if you integrate mantra, you'll have very instantaneous experiences and results and I've heard this from many, many people that I've recommended this to. So I would highly recommend doing meditations and yoga with mantra included in them. Next is the vegetarian diet. 
Yes, I know some of you might be uncomfortable with this topic and I understand it can be a really big shift for us coming from different cultures, but a really, really prominent foundation for spiritual growth as we understand in Sanatana Dharma is having a pure body and pure mind. And the way we do this is really, really big component is through our diet. Vegetarian diet is not only because we revere the cow as sacred and as a, as a divine being, but also because we understand the qualities of meat and what it brings into us. There are qualities that we don't want if we want to excel in spirituality. Because it's, it's not saying something is right or wrong or good or bad. There, there is a quality to it. But if we're spiritually seeking to go into higher states of consciousness and more subtle frequencies, having something which is really grounded, extremely heavy, soaked in karma and violence is only going to lower that ability to reach those states. And so it's almost like if you're doing yoga and meditation but still eating meat, they're just contradicting one another they're like balancing each other out so you're not moving anywhere so vegetarian diet is a really key component and again you will see the impact of this in your mind especially and in your emotional state really within a matter of weeks three weeks into being vegetarian i wasn't even deciding to do it for life and i never went back from that time because i saw so significantly the change that happened in me so I definitely invite you guys to try that out at least for 21 days and see the impact it has on you. But not least is something which we might have initial aversion or fear about because of the programming we've been inundated with in the West through media, through movies, through you know news and everything. But it's finding your guru. This is as you go further down the path of Sanatana Dharma, I just want to let you know it is an absolutely essential and inseparable part of this path. If anybody tells you differently, they're just misinformed. So don't have the fear. There are so many wonderful, authentic, very, very empowered, enlightened teachers that exist in the world today. We are so blessed and there's so many ways to find them because of, the, because of technology. And so even if you're not with a guru in person, they can still be your guru. Do understand that. And there's one saying that we have within Sanatana Dharma that we love to say a lot, which is that we don't find the guru, the guru finds us. So when you're open and when you're going further down this path of seeking, you will see that you'll land on a being which you resonate with so strongly and you develop that feeling connection with. That's when you know you found your teacher. And the ultimate way to learn anything is by learning it from the one who's lived it, the one who's experienced it. That's why the guru disciple tradition is an essential part of this spiritual path. So I urge you all to keep an open mind with that. And of course, it might not happen right away. And if you're totally new, I'm not saying you need to find a guru right away. But as you go down the path after some months or some years, really, really keep that as a tenant and as an open-minded idea that guru is going to guide you to the next next level and I can really tell you from my own experience that I didn't even scratch the surface of understanding this entire path in Hinduism and Sanatana Dharma and all of these philosophies until I met my guru. I, I really really hope and pray for you all to find the same blessing in your life. The last point I'll conclude with is the internal search for the question who am I? Why am I here? This is such a major part of the path of Sanatana Dharma. It's that intense yearning to find that truth and that clarity of who we are. And like I said, we're, there's, no, there's no difference between finding who we are and finding God. That's the most beautiful part. Is what, as soon as we find that inner self we've been longing for, everything else unlocks. We realize that God, that God we relate to and refer to or we're seeking for all this time is within us and accessible within our own body and our own consciousness. So do intense sitting with those questions. Keep growing your questioning because questioning is the most beautiful gift you can give. Don't conclude all the time. Don't try to be right and end with answers. Keep seeking. Keep asking more questions, more questions. That's what's going to lead you 
to the truth and ultimately di deeper down the path of Hinduism, of Sanatana Dharma. Sanatana Dharma is all about multiple gods, multiple goddesses, multiple births, and multiple methods for enlightenment. So again, one last tip I will end with is do not get hung up on the dogma. I see a lot of practitioners, even within our path of Hinduism, within different branches, having this idea that whatever their path is, is the only, the only way, the best. But this is directly contradictory to Sanatana Dharma philosophy. It's always been all-inclusive. It's always been all-encompassing. And so let's keep that spirit alive. Remain out of duality. Remain out of judgment. Don't let yourself be swallowed by the mind and the ego. Don't think that you're, whatever you found is what works for everybody. That's the reason why there's so much diversity in this path. And that's what makes it so unique and something which will never die. Really, this is why it's the oldest religion, the oldest spiritual path in the world, and I truly believe it will never, never end. It's, con it's called the eternal path for a reason, because it includes all. And so keep that in mind, the principle of oneness, that each person is going to connect in different ways, and there are so many methods to get enlightened. Yogis have one path of you know austerity and aestheticism, aestheticism and tapas in doing extreme spiritual practice and purification of body and mind but tantrikas they have a totally different approach of embracing all life saying yes to life diving into all experiences and so you have to be able to understand all and at least have a grasp on why they're all unique and beautiful in their own way I hope this video was helpful for you. I can't wait to talk to you guys about this further. And of course, I will always be making more videos on this topic. It's really what my channel is all about at the end of the day. I love you all and I'm so excited for you all to grow your seeking with intensity and patience and love and open-mindedness as you learn about different paths. And even if it doesn't resonate with you, even if you just want to learn more about other people's traditions and past, that's such a beautiful thing and I applaud you for that. So thank you for connecting with me today. Definitely please leave your comments and questions down below, especially related to this topic. I will really, really do my best to answer all of the questions, especially those that pertain to everybody. And if you want, you can also private message me on Instagram or Facebook at Kundalini Yogini Prasida. You can follow my website for more information on this topic, kundaliniyogini.co and stay tuned on my youtube channel hit the bell icon to make sure you get notifications for the next videos all about these beautiful subjects i love you guys have a blessed and blissful week nithyanandam everyone